So good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Mandy Pennington, and I am the Director of Digital Marketing at Wilkes University. I'll be moderating this morning's academic session, Performing Arts to Perfecting Your Future. And before we begin, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items with everyone. First, if you're wondering why you're not able to talk to other attendees right now, don't panic. It's not your computer. We're currently muting everyone, so that way we eliminate any background noise during the presentation. Throughout the course of the session, please feel free to use the chat feature to ask any questions that you might have. I'll be keeping track of those questions so that we make sure that they're answered at the end. During the Q&A portion of the session, I'll mute, unmute each of you so that you can ask your questions directly. And finally, we will be recording today's session so that we can share it with those who could not attend. If you're using video at any time during today's session, please note that that will be included in the recording. Now I'd like to introduce to you this morning's session leader, Joe Dawson, Interim Chair of the Division of the Performing Arts. Okay, um, so I'm just going to give you an overview of the division first. Okay, so, uh, and then I'll introduce other faculty who are specific to, a, uh, to an area so that if you have questions, you can direct them to them. Okay, all right, so, there is the Division of Performing Arts, which houses music, theater, and dance, okay? Um, and and uh, within the division, there is a major in uh, musical theater, a BFA in musical theater, a BA in theater, and a BA in theater design and technology, okay? There is a dance minor, and there is a music minor, okay? So uh, in the theater area, um, we have the director of theater, who is John Lee Betrow. He's also the acting teacher, so you can, you can ask any questions about acting to him. Uh, Dwight Camelucci, who is um, our uh, scene and lighting designer. Um, uh, myself, I'm a theater person, so I'm a director and a costume designer. Um, Tom Rupp is our technical theater, our TD. Um, Terry Moore is our light and sound person. Um, and so that's it for, for theater. All right, so what you should understand is the Division of Performing Arts, we have the, the um, advantage of collaborating, but there's some things we, that we do quite independently of each other, okay? Um, so uh, in the dance area, there's Kristen Degnan Boonen, who is phoning in, so you don't see her picture there, but you'll see her name. Um, she is the director of dance, she, um, and sh her area is ballet, okay? Uh, Lynn Escrow, you can wait, <laughs> uh, who is our jazz and modern teacher. Uh, we also have two other faculty members in dance, uh, Chris Cross, who teaches uh, Dance 100, and Sean Harris, who teaches tap, okay? All right, so um, and then in the music area, we have uh, Dr. Lisa Levy, uh, and she's the voice person and the choir person. Um, Mark Johnson, who has charge of civic band, marching band, music theory, okay, and music history, okay. Um, we also, in the music area, we have um, ensembles in jazz band, orchestra, uh, and flute ensemble. And if any music people want to tell me what I'm leaving out, uh, feel free to jump in. But I think that's it. Um, the only thing I think I didn't say was that we have, um, uh, uh, we have the university choir and chamber singers, which is a more select group. Okay. Um, okay. With that, what I think I'd like to do now is to um, uh, ask uh, the director of theater and the director of dance to just give an overview. Uh, and then perhaps uh, if Lisa Levy is in the room, uh, Lisa and Mark can, uh, can give you a description of uh, what's uh, available in um, vocal music and instrumental music. Okay. All right. So uh, John, if you want to go first, <laughs> go ahead. 
There, sorry, I just had to unmute myself there. Um, sure, as uh, as Joe mentioned, I'm the the uh, acting and uh, voice for the stage teacher. So in in my area, uh, there's four levels of acting. Uh, the first, uh, acting one, is kind of a Stanislavski approach to acting. There's uh, we work on a couple uh, uh, monologues and scenes uh, in that particular class, but ba basically getting the groundwork for the acting. Uh, uh, world and technique. Uh, and then acting two, we move on to more, uh, more classical style of modern theater. Uh, we introduce some new, uh, uh, more uh, different styles of uh, acting technique, like Meisner, for example, uh, exercises there. Uh, Chekhov, uh, Michael Chekhov, uh, not his uncle Anton, but uh, Michael Chekhov, Chekhov technique, which deals more with kind of imagination and different physicalization of uh, acting uh, actions and things of that sort. Um, we then in acting three, we deal with uh, classic classical style uh, technique, uh, working with uh, Shakespearean texts and other classical texts. Uh, we also do some mask work. Uh, we try to introduce a little bit of film uh, work as well. It's, it's interesting now that we're all online, uh, I'm working with both acting one and acting four right now this semester, and we're actually doing a lot of TV film work only because we're teaching acting on, on the camera right now. So it's actually been a, a bonus that way. But in acting three, we, we focus on, uh, as I said, uh, film work. Uh, and uh, then acting four is a business uh, uh, class for the actor dealing with auditions, putting together monologues, uh, I think they work on, they get nine monologues in their portfolio, plus uh, two songs. So there's classical dialect monologues and everything. So when they get out of uh, uh, college, when they graduate from Wilkes, they'll have a pretty solid portfolio to work from uh, when they're auditioning. Uh, we also, uh, you might have heard some of the, I see a lot of familiar faces here, so I, you might have heard this too, but we, we do encourage our uh, students to audition throughout the year for uh, professional programs or work uh, in the theater. So uh, when, you, when you're when uh, you home during the summers uh, that you are hopefully not waiting tables, but you're actually in some aspect of theater. Uh, we also go to conferences, uh, uh, Southeastern Theater Conferences uh, uh, throughout the past, I don't know, five or six years, we've been real active with them. Uh, I think next year it's in Memphis, so we'll try to get as many students to go down there to that uh, conference. Um, and then uh, I also teach voice and diction for the, the stage, uh, and they're basically learning standard American speech, uh, trying to take away some of the uh, regional, regionalisms in your uh, text work. Um, doesn't mean we're going to try to take away your ability to, to speak from <laughs> the way you speak at home, but it's just for the stage. Uh, and we we'll also do dialect work in that in that class. So there's a, those are the basic classes that I uh, teach. I also, of course, direct and try to implement uh, a lot of the class work onto the stage in the, in the shows that I direct. And, um, but that's basically my, my, my world. Of course, as director of theater too, I also uh, deal with the production lab and uh, capstones and th things of that sort. All right. So I'll, I'll hand it over to uh, Kristen if you want to uh, talk a little bit about the, the dance area. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello. Okay. Yep. Yes, uh, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, my name is uh, Kristen Degnan Boonen, and I am the director of dance. Uh, the dance minor. I think has a really wonderful, fully rounded um, approach. We offer classes in classical ballet, uh, modern, jazz, tap, dance composition. We do have a course in dance history um, and uh, comprehensive dance forms, which is an introductory class, which serves as the arts prerequisite for um, the university's um, core curriculum. Uh, we have all levels of all of those uh, different genres in dance. Um, I teach primarily the ballet classes, 
Uh, Professor Escrow uh, teaches jazz and modern. She is also quite an accomplished choreographer uh, and does a lot of work in the musical theater, uh, work that is done in the theater um, major. Um, Chris Cross is, helps with the comprehensive dance forms, but she teaches dance composition, which is the structure of how to build dances. Uh, Sean Harris is our tap instructor and also contributes when needed at different times during uh, musical theater productions in the tap area. So you see we are very, very fully rounded. Uh, the dance minor presently uh, requires 18 credit hours um, to complete. Uh, there are, there's one course that is a requirement, which is the dance composition, but the student is allowed to build the uh, dance minor based on how they would like to structure it. And um, myself and our faculty help guide with that process. Um, it's, um, we have a spring, annual spring uh, repertoire program, which um, involves student works that are built during the course of the spring semester, uh, during dance composition, and also faculty works, which are presented at that time. It is always a very uh, popular and enjoyable experience for all of our, our students. Uh, we have a range of students from very, very experienced people who've had many years of, of training to those who are just beginners, um, anyone who is interested in participating. So um, please feel free to join us. Um, and if you have any questions um, after this meeting or at any time, please feel free to contact me. Thank you so much. I'm gonna pass it on now. Um, Kristen, we have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. You speak on the ballet conservatory uh, the school offers. Okay, the, um, the conservatory at Wilkes University is a community-based um, program that is held in the evenings. It has ballet classes, um, this is like eight levels of, of technique in a modified syllabus. Also offered at those times are music classes as well. Lauren Gentilesco is the facilitator of that program, okay? Uh, she is the one who um, you would contact for that. Uh, the ballet uh, classes offer, um, as I said, seven different levels. We offer also point variations. We have productions. We have a full-length Nutcracker that goes up in December and typically in June, not this year, unfortunately. We would have been doing um, Humperdinck's uh, Hansel and Gretel and Beethoven's Seventh Symphony, unfortunately, but we'll have to do them later. Um, and um, it, it runs, oh goodness, classes are every evening and Saturdays, except Friday nights. Um, that's the only time we don't offer classes. That is the evening that we have a classical Indian dance class that is offered. Okay, thank you, Joe. Okay. Um, uh, I don't see Lisa here, but uh, Mark, do you want to talk about the music? program sure i can do that so hi everybody uh my name is mark johnson i am the director of bands here at um at, at wilkes university uh you don't see my face because uh during these uh strange times i am also a full-time stay-at-home dad on top of teaching so i've got my little girl here who's uh it's, it's been a rough morning so rather than <laughs> show everyone that you just hear my voice instead uh so uh, at music, we have a lot of opportunities for people to participate. Um, you have ensembles. Um, so in the choral ensembles, uh, there are two different choral ensembles this year being directed by, um, directed by uh, uh, Dr. Levy. Uh, and those are pretty much scheduled so they don't affect your other classes. Um, I direct the marching band, the pep band, and the civic band. Um, our civic band is our weekly uh, concert band that rehearses in the evenings on Wednesday nights. Um, 
after your classes are over, so no one should have class conflicts. Marching band is scheduled two days a week in the fall, plus football games on Saturdays. Uh, and it's set so that it doesn't interfere with any classes, labs, or anything. We have instruments for students. We have uh, students that come in having very little marching experience. In fact, we've had many students come in that have never marched before. Uh, and we keep get everybody up to speed. And then we have students that came from programs that are big national tournament winning uh, programs. And they get to make great music here with us. Um, on, every week uh, during the marching band. Uh, in the spring, and a uh, little bit at the end of the fall semester, the pep band plays for basketball games, hockey games, uh, some other gigs throughout the year that the pep band's requested at. Um, it's a really great opportunity for, for students to continue making music like they did in high school. Um, there's no audition requirement for the marching band. Um, just sign up for the class. Uh, and we, we got our band camp dates coming up in August. Uh, and I'm going to send an email out to anybody on their application that said anything about marching band or instrumental music. Um, let's see. We have orchestra that meets on Monday nights. Again, we have this scheduled so that it takes place after your classes uh, so that it doesn't interfere. Um, last fall, they did, uh, they did Beethoven 5, and it's spectacular. Um, also have a flute ensemble that meets once a week. Our students can play uh, literature from the flute repertoire. Uh, students get the opportunity to play not only just their normal flute, but piccolo and alto flute and tenor flute and bass flute, all those things. Making great music with other flautists in the area. Uh, and there's a jazz ensemble that meets on Thursday nights directed by, uh, by Nick Driscoll. And he, uh, I talked to him last night about it, and he said that they're, they're, he's got some great things planned for the upcoming year, um, and that uh, they play music from, from the classic swing era all the way through now in big band styles. Uh, and, and so I was told that uh, people should just get a hold of him for more information. Uh, students are eligible to take private lessons through both the university or the conservatory. Uh, if you take lessons through the conservatory, uh, it does not count for credit for your your or does not count for college credit but if you take lessons through the university system you, it, it does but there is an additional fee associated with that we do have a music minor uh, the music minor is 18 credit hours uh, and in that includes uh, classes on music theory classes on music history uh, your ensemble uh, as well as uh, one elective music class uh, in the past, we've offered things like Music Theory 2, or we've offered Conducting, um, or we can you know, find out whatever the general consensus is to offer a special topics course. Okay, so with that, I think um, we are uh, able to take any questions that you have. Um, so um, Mandy, if you wanna, I guess, unmute everybody. Um, I will say that this format doesn't always <laughs> encourage um, participation. It's, it, you know, we're still getting used to this, you know, uh, dealing in this way. But I do, uh, we know that none of you are shy. <laughs> so, uh, so please feel free to address your questions to anybody up there on the screen that, um, uh, that you wish to, and we can get a conversation going here. Okay. Um, how do we go about signing up for classes such as the private vocal classes or the ballet conservatory? Okay, the um, the private lessons, our secretary handles that and they're arranged around your regular course schedule. So you wouldn't really need to worry about that uh, until you come to campus uh, and then uh, we'll um, just fill them in where you can fit them in uh, and um, and then your private lesson will be then you know so um, what's required of musical theater majors is a half an hour but sometimes students like to schedule an hour or the teacher will ask you to schedule an hour now it's a little bit more expensive so I just want to you know make you aware of that um, but uh, but that's how that's that's how that's done Thank you. Okay. Okay, and and for the ballet class, if I may, Joe, um, 
you could always contact me and I could introduce you to Lauren Gentilesco and we could discuss uh, which level would be appropriate. We could do a placement class for you um, within the conservatory. And again, there is an extra cost um, that is incurred with that, but we do have a special rate for um, university students um, that we offer, okay? And then we would move from there. I'm, I might add Thank too you. that normally uh, there is an orientation uh, one or two sessions during the summertime where you'll um, meet with the faculty. I mean, I, of course, it's up in the air right now how that's going to take place, if it's going to be virtual or, or live, but you'll, you'll meet with your advisor, and that's a place, too, where you can uh, look at your schedule and, and, and talk about classes that you're interested in and things that you want to sign up for. So that is another uh, place that we won't leave you out in the cold just to figure out your own schedule that you will have an advisor to work with uh, sometime over the summer. Now, I believe that orientation session uh, this year will be a couple days before classes start. Okay, so we'll, we'll meet with you as a group and then we'll meet with you individually and you'll be assigned an advisor. Mm -hmm. Any other? We have a couple of questions that came through on the chat. Okay. Uh, the first is with marching band, what are the step requirements for drum major? So I, I sent him a message and answered that question. Okay, great. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, then Jaina asks, uh, which dance classes do we take within the first year? Um, John or Kristen, do you, well, John, you know the, the, uh, you know the schedule for them. So why don't you take that? Uh, for the for the BFA, so there's uh, there's the boys classes. So there's a uh, half an hour, an hour uh, for the BFA. There's uh, studio classes too, where all the uh, voice students meet. I believe it's one is that one time one day a week. Oh, this is dance. Though. Oh, this is dance. I'm sorry. Yeah, this oh, is oh, dance. Class. Oh, okay. Then uh, turn. Let me put my. Let me read the question then. <laughs> <laughs> Dance Which dance classes do you take? Um, I think, well, it, that might be uh, to Kristen, but I think it is it usually ballet. I mean, yeah. usually that's the groundwork uh, class that you would take in the first year, uh, possibly Broadway styles too, depending on the shows that uh, that are we're working on. Uh, I, th I think that's the main first year, and then you have possibility for other classes too you can sign up for. Um, for, for the most part, too, the, the first semester, uh, because you're taking fundamental levels of everything else, um, there isn't room quite yet for a dance class unless you've taken some AP courses or something like that, and we can squeeze, squeeze it in, uh, because you'll go over the number of credits allowed for a full-time load. I mean, you can always take them, but it would cost more money beyond your uh, tuition uh, but certainly second semester you can and um, um, we also have um, based on your audition some you know a, a question that's come up uh, is are there some people who need dance immediately um, and should we put them into ballet right away Okay, so you can work that out with your advisor and, and perhaps that would mean that you wouldn't take mm -hmm. something else. Um, but it's a very crowded first semester. It's a very crowded first semester. Um, you know, but, uh, um, and there are things that are offered on a cycle like every other year or every other semester or something like that. So, um, so the schedules are kind of rigid for you uh, for a while, okay, until you get the fundamental levels of every area in, okay? We have another question in the chat. Uh, is there placement testing for dance, acting, or voice classes? Um. I, I can uh, I can address the acting there there everybody starts in acting one so uh, there's no placement for that we we uh, and everybody has different 
skills coming in and different challenges. So we work together as a class in the acting area. So there's no, nothing for the acting. Uh, I don't know if Kristen or Lynn want to address the dance portion. Yeah, Kristen or Lynn, do you want to speak to that? I think Kristen's muted. I don't know if that's a... Oh, okay. I'm sorry. But Lynn, you want to take that? Um, as far as... I was waiting for Kristen to see if she was going to yeah. jump. As far as placement for the dance classes, um, we kind of leave that up to the students as far as are you a beginner, um, intermediate, you know, whatever the case may be. However, we will talk to you about that. And if a class that you're taking is maybe too advanced, you know, then we'll, we'll back you up a little bit. So we guide you every step of the way with the, with the placement for dance classes. Um, some uh, cat would ask about, um, will we be receiving a list of, um, required material, clothes, shoes, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, uh, that information is always provided in the syllabus, which is emailed to the students prior to the semester beginning. So you will absolutely know what um, dance clothes are required or which shoes are required. So you don't have to purchase anything until you get that information. Also, uh, you know, um, for musical theater majors, I do think you ought to have a good pair of character shoes for straight shows and for musicals. Um, and sometimes, if I'm not wrong, uh, Lynn, sometimes musicals require different kinds of shoes, you know, like the, you know, the, the height of the heel for character shoes and all of that kind of thing, the required support. But at any rate, um, if you're a musical theater major or even a theater major, you should have a, a pair of character shoes to start. They're the most, um, you know, they're, they're the safest and they, you know, they support your feet for a lot of movement. If you, you know, if you wear something else, they'll just break, <laughs> you know. So as the costume designer, um, you know, I would suggest that right away you get a, you know, a, a good pair of, um, um, of character shoes, you can get them on Amazon, you know, ranging anywhere from $7 to $70 or something. So I'm glad somebody asked that. <laughs> um, and for men, you should have a good pair of dress shoes, you know, uh, um, you know, we can provide them, but, uh, but again, if we provide them to, you know, maybe not something you're comfortable wearing. Let me look and see if there's any other question. Yeah, there's a few more that came in. Um, one came from Angel. Uh, she's interested in looking into intimacy coordination as a potential career or backup. Is this something that she can look into within the school or is that something that she has to look into on her own? I am not sure what intimacy coordination is. Angel, if you wanna describe that for us. I know a, um, I took a summer camp, I guess you would call it, at Westchester University, and they had someone come in who, um, there would always have to be someone around for musicals or TV shows or movies or any kind of production, really, that would kind of just monitor any kind of intimate moments or anything that would, like, any kind of relationships between the characters to make sure that they know it's a safe space and kind of, like, so that kind of thing. And I know that they're, uh, I know that they're, they exist. So <laughs> that's about it. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, I'd say I am familiar with that too. And I, that is something, uh, I don't know if there's another, uh, department that might deal with that education or something that has something going, but that's also something we could possibly work out as an independent study too. And we could, you know, look into, uh, you know, different teachers and things like that or, or information. So that's something we can potentially look at uh, individually with you. Or, or if there's a couple of students that are in interested in it, we can look at it possibly as an independent study thing. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Lisa Levy, Dr. Levy, um, has just joined us, uh, uh, and uh, Lisa is the um, uh, voice teacher and uh, is the director of choirs here at Wilkes. Okay. Hi. There was there was a question, uh, Lisa, uh, that we we kind of addressed the acting and dance part of it, but there was a question if there's a placement uh, uh, test, I guess, for the voice classes. Oh, um, no, not really. There are for the choirs, but not for voice lessons. For voice lessons, um, you sign up, and uh, if it's part of your major, obviously, um, you're in. <laughs> um, and uh, the levels, you can either take a half hour or an hour, depending on your own preference and how much you want to pay for. Uh, we have a staff accompanist who accompanies you. And uh, you just progress up the ladder from one level to the next type of thing. Now, if students are wanting to take lessons outside of their major, then there's a little bit of, um, a little more uh, discrepancy on my part as far as who takes them and, and how they progress. So, does that answer your question? Yeah? Okay. Thumbs up. <laughs> Uh, to add on to that, another question that came through in the chat, should we bring any previous sheet music we've worked on for our private lessons? Oh, sure. Yep, definitely. Definitely. It gives me a lot better idea of what your background is and what your capabilities are um, right off the bat. You know, I can see, oh, hey, yeah, this is really cool what you've done here and there. And, okay. So that's good question. Good question. Bring everything. Another question that came in is, how does a BFA musical theater schedule look with honors? Um, we have um, a couple of honors students um, in, in the program. And um, I think the only scheduling thing that happens is in the first semester, there's an honors class uh, in the evening. I think it's a freshman um, seminar honors class, all right, that you have to go to uh, one day a week. And so it doesn't, we've never had any problems um, with evening rehearsals. We just work around you for that day, for that night. Uh, it has not affected casting. Um, uh, and um, it, other than that, I don't think I've ever had any other conflict with the honors program. I think most of the classes, the honors classes are during the daytime too, so it doesn't, uh, you just have to work uh, your choices around the theater classes, but uh, it's, they do fit pretty well. Another question that came through is, can we have a minor outside of our school, as in outside of the College of Arts and Sciences? Oh, certainly, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I was even thinking there was, there's someone, um, we have a senior, and I don't know whether she completed the degree, but she took a, a, um, a, a curriculum at, at a community college mm -hmm. in criminology, I think. All right, so I don't know, I, you know, like I don't know whether she finished that degree or not, but there, yeah, there, people do uh, double major here in all kinds of different things. Um, but you have to work it through with two advisors. Um, you know, um, it would be wrong to assume that every class you need is offered every semester. <laughs> okay, so you have to work those things out. And um, your advisor in theater can work out the theater stuff. And then your other um, major, you have to go to them and say, what do I need for this semester and when or when can I make this up because um, it's the kind of school where um, something may be offered every other semester every other year or something like that so it it requires um, a great deal of coordination between two major advisors mm -hmm. but but on the minor side it's relatively easy to minor in anything in any any one of the colleges at Wilkes I think most of them are just 18 credits I would say, uh, Joe, would you agree that mo across the board? Yeah. yeah, 18 credits, yeah. And there, a lot of times they're flexible credits too. It's like 
some things like any any course under a two over a two hundred level require you know is is um, you know it's uh, many times it's not a specific course you know it's just a you know an upper level uh, combination of courses so uh, and you can actually declare a minor all the way till you're into your senior year sometimes you might be surprised you say oh look i got 18 credits in this <laughs> i have enough for a minor and you can just apply for a minor at that point another question that came through on the chat is if we cannot be on campus for the start of the year is there anything planned as for classes lynn you've had the most experience doing an on, doing online dance classes do you want to speak to that Sure. And I've had that question from a few other prospective students. Um, we've been really doing, in my opinion, a great job of getting the work across. Um, with jazz, the, I teach the jazz classes and Broadway styles um, and modern. We've made videos and put them on YouTube. And if anybody's interested in seeing any of that, you can contact me, you can email me and, and I will forward them to you. Uh, we also have a studio membership with, it's called CLI Studios, and they're out of California, and um, they have professional teachers that present live classes as well as classes that you can watch at any time. So that's come in handy for us to um, have the students observe a class or a piece of choreography and then have a class discussion about it. So we've... And I don't usually do a lot of that because when we're live in class, we are dancing all the time. So it's been it's been very interesting and the, and the students have enjoyed it very much. But as far as the dance program goes, we absolutely have a plan in place. And as I said, it's been working really well so far. Mm -hmm. John, yeah. On Zoom, right? John. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, the acting classes have gone pretty well as uh, also, I think uh, I was a little afraid at first moving from the studio classroom uh, up to online for acting classes, but it's actually been really great. We've, there's certain aspects of acting and, and the, the truth that, that one needs to uh, portray in, in acting that comes across on the camera that you can't really fake. So it's actually been really nice groundwork uh, working on uh, on the camera. So. Uh, it just actually gets out of order a little bit because it's something, as I mentioned before, that we usually work in acting um, three, but the fundamentals of acting one in the fall, if we have to go to online, we're not going to lose anything. We're actually probably going to gain, you'll just have to do a little bit more advanced stuff uh, online. Um, but uh, they've been working monologues and, and scenes online uh, in acting one uh, this semester. And as I said, in acting four, uh, they're, uh, working on their port portfolio online. So we haven't missed a step, uh, if that is the case. So uh, there is also, I, it is certainly up in the air what's going to happen in the fall, but uh, in terms of productions and if we're going to be on campus, and I know most uh, colleges and universities really are pushing to try to figure out a way to be back on campus uh, is the discussion now, but certainly we don't know uh, what's going to happen. But there are certainly alternatives for uh, the the shows too. I actually just watched one of one college, local college or university just uh, put together a production and actually use Zoom and there were actually design elements and costumes and everything that came, was pretty good. I I certainly don't want to uh, hope that's not the the case uh, that it's at least long term for next year. But uh, but there are certainly ways around it that we can still do our job and and entertain people and learn things. Um. We had planned to do a production of Julius Caesar uh, last, or you know, uh, a month ago, and um, the design that Dwight and I put together is eerily relevant <laughs> right now. I mean, we had, uh, um, you know, so because we had a lot of technology incorporated into the into the show, um, it almost, you know, could be redone next year. Uh, and in a really exciting way, um, virtually, you know, so, um, uh, so I'm, I'm giving that a lot of thought. Um, uh, so, uh, Lisa, you've been doing voice lessons online. So, uh, can you tell them how that's going? Sure. Uh, it's obviously it's not as, 
as good as in person. Uh, the, the medium of the um, speakers and the transmission of overtones and that kind of thing uh, isn't anywhere equal to what we need it to be for this particular form of art, this genre, but um, it does give me a way to check up on people and I'll tell you what, <laughs> A lot of people, a lot of our students have learned how to sing their exercises a cappella. Woohoo! <laughs> so, so it's been a good ear training experience for a lot of them to be able to, to do that, to handle everything without any uh, form of support uh, on my end. Because the piano, you can't sing and do piano at the same time going through Zoom. I've been doing them through Zoom. Um, uh, I'm hoping that uh, we don't have to put up with this for the fall, um, but if we do, we will go ahead and keep going. And uh, those of you who are coming in with some music already learned, more's, you know, more power to you, because that'll definitely facilitate getting off on a, on a running start in the fall. So I also see a, a question from Jack, the cost difference between having hour long voice lessons and half hour lessons. You know, I'm not quite sure what that difference is uh, through the school, you'd have to ask um, Mary Ellen. That'd be a good question to ask Mary Ellen. Uh, slow our uh, administrative uh, office person or the um, finance registrar that type, right, Joe? Yeah, I think if you go online, it's it's per credit. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, half hour lessons are one what, credit. One credit, and okay, so uh, if you go online and you look up the price, because I don't know what it's going to be next year. Um, and you look up the price per credit, you would just add that to your, um, uh, to the half, half hour. And, right. and, and then the uh, uh, hour long is a two credit class. Okay. So now if you take it through the conservatory, it's a little less, but you wouldn't get college credit for that. Right. Okay. Students who are in the BFA program aren't allowed to take, um, because you don't get university credit, so it doesn't count toward your degree program. So if you're in the BFA program, you would take lessons through the university. Once in a while, we'll have a student who's outside the degree program who wants to take lessons, but they might not have the capacity to really do what you all do as a BFA major. So then I suggest to them that they go ahead and talk to our conservatory director and possibly take lessons through the conservatory. Because those are... Um, you don't work with an accompanist through them. You're just working with me, uh, learning a few songs for fun, getting learning how to sing better. But it's not anything toward a professional program. So, okay. I also I see there's a question too about the uh, when do we decide the season uh, from Janae there uh, for next year. I mean, usually it's right around now is when we decide things. Uh, as we've been talking, though, uh, things certainly are up in the air, whether we'll be on campus or so that's kind of holding us up a bit. I mean, the faculty are going to continue to get together and, and talk about uh, if we're on campus, what, you know, what shows uh, we might look at and also contingency shows if uh, the fall we're not on campus. So that's I, I hate to you know hesitate on, on answering your question, but uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit up in the up in the air right now, but we are working and we'll let you know uh, as soon as we uh, get that information and we can make a final decision too, or we might make a decision and have to change it. So, uh, well, I guess everybody will have to be a little bit flexible uh, for this year, but, but normally from after, uh, hopefully after this year, uh, it will be about around this time that everybody will know what the season is. Also because our designers have to start you know, designing and working and have discussions that we'd like to have everything decided uh, around this this time. Um, we usually say that we're waiting to see how many people we get, or new people we get, and what the mix is. And then, already, I mean, it, most of the deposits have been pretty early, and so we have, um, we know we have uh, 10 deposited new freshmen or transfer students. And so, um, so we're getting a, a pretty good. So. Yeah. And, and I'll add to that is, I mean, one of the benefits of you guys deciding on Wilkes is that we are a small program and we do make that we look at our first year, uh, 
students and the makeup of our students in, in deciding the shows, you know, what you guys bring to uh, the possibility of, of uh, show choices. So, um, and we, as we've said before, I think we've talked to many of you that we really do uh, look at our students and see who needs to do what and, and where and, and, and in our casting, we're not a, one of those jumbo programs that, uh, that only a few people work. So uh, we, we are certainly interested in who's coming in and, and our choice of shows. Another question that came in is uh, rehearsals being in the evenings, does ballet conservatory also conflict with rehearsals? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're, uh, you're muted. Oh, she can't hear me. <laughs> Say, let me say what? She's muted. Can you unmute her? Yeah, she's unmuted now, I think. Okay. Am I okay? Yes. Okay, good. Um, we do not conflict uh, with rehearsals. Uh, we pay very close attention. Um, obviously, if you are majoring in musical theater and you are in a production, that is your primary focus. Um, there are as I said, multiple ballet classes that are held um, all week long. On Mondays, uh, classes run in both dance studios um, simultaneously from five until about 8.30 in the evening. On Tuesdays, uh, 5.30 to seven. And then after that are other types of rehearsals, say for like the Nutcracker. Wednesday is similar to Monday, Thursday is similar to Tuesday and then Saturdays all day long. So there is, the student has the ability and the flexibility to be able to take a different level or um, adjust their schedule accordingly so that they're getting the full benefit out of, out of all of the program. Um, if you cannot take a dance class during your first semester as a musical theater student because of uh, your, your schedule, that it's just too tight, you can always look at possibly taking a conservatory class because then you could continue staying in shape. Okay, uh, that's that's pivotal. And I know, as you know, as a dancer myself, for many many years ago, it was important to stay in shape. And for those of you who had dance training and want to continue that, there is that option for you. Okay. Okay, there's uh, another question from Angel. Um, for vocal lessons, do we focus on musical theater repertoire or classical, opera, foreign, et cetera? Also incorporated, uh, I have a lot of different sheet music. Ha <laughs> ha. Angel, it's great that you have such a good background. Um, most of you have done probably a little bit of both. Um, the the, the classical training plus um, Broadway, um, or what I call theater music. Um, and that's exactly what I continue with in the, at the collegiate level. So you will be getting a lot of bel canto, which is the classical method, the legit method of training, basically to make sure that your voice is strong, is flexible, that you have the breathing apparatus that you need to, to be able to support your voice all the way through your career and that you have the ability to understand your voice and know when you're doing something right and when you're doing something wrong or what the director's asking you to do right or wrong because you're not going to have a voice well you're not going to have me for the rest of your career you'll have me for these four years and when you graduate you're going to be a professional on your own i will shake your hand and say yay welcome to the ranks so so with that regard, I do a lot of classical training as far as the technique goes. And then we incorporate the belt technique, um, timbre changes, timbre choices, because not every character that you're going to be representing on stage is going to, going to need the same kind of timbre, the same kind of technique. So you need to learn as much as, poss as you possibly can. I have students right now who are doing a little bit of opera, who are doing a little bit of oratorio, who are doing a little bit of art song. I have one girl who learned a French piece this semester, another one who learned a German piece. Um, all that kind of stuff 
is just going to help you build your voice. And that's basically what we're looking at that for. Primarily, we, we start focusing on what you are going to be looking at career-wise. So we'll find out if you have a, a character type. Some people don't. Some people are so multifaceted that, that you can't really pigeonhole them into one character type. But we do want to uh, get as clear representation as you can of, of the kind of repertoire that you're going to be auditioning with and hopefully singing professionally. So of course that's going to incorporate a lot of music theater. When you first start, I'll be choosing a lot of your literature. By the time you go through the whole program, when you get to be a senior, you're going to be choosing most of your rep with a little bit of guidance from me and from uh, the other faculty members because we try, I try to incorporate them in their, all their wisdom and experience as much as we possibly can in um, building you as a marketable product for when you graduate. Okay, so I hope that answered Angel. I hope that answered your question. I have been in voice for 10 years, so will I start with a basic foundation? Oh, you'll build from where you are. Every student is different. Every student is unique. I'm not the kind of person that says, okay, here's my package and you got to fit into it. No, it's the other way around. I, I, that's why I said if you have stuff, bring it because that gives me a better, much better idea of, of where you are and where we need to start building what your strengths and weaknesses are and we, we take off from there, okay? Okay. So we have a few more minutes left. So is there any other questions? Um, I have um, some videos that I could share with you if you were interested. Um, so we have, I don't know how many, most of you have been on campus, but some of you have not. Uh, you know, so we, so John put together a, um, a video of the uh, facilities we have. We have some um, dance videos that we've, uh, that Lynn has recorded uh, online. Uh, and we have um, two um, videos from shows. Okay, so that you know, and some of you have seen Spitfire Grill. I'm not sure how many of you have seen Nine, uh, but we can, we can, if you want to hang around, if you, uh, I can share my screen, I can attempt to share my screen with you and show you those if you're interested. So if, is that something that the group would be interested in? Okay. We, we could probably share their emails to the Google Drive for the, for nine, so they can actually look at it at their leisure if you want to do it that way. Oh, so, yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't, <laughs> I'll just show you a clip today. Oh. <laughs> One last question really quick. If any students have any additional questions after today's session, what is the best option for contacting you? Is it email? Yeah, send me an email. Yeah, email. Yeah, yeah email is probably the best. And, and again, this new world of Zoom too, if, the, you know, if email doesn't answer the question, we can have another uh, personal meeting with, on Zoom too, if you want to talk to uh, some of the faculty, but, uh, but probably email is the quickest. We've been doing Zoom with students, prospective students, you know, uh, since March. So we can, we can arrange that if you, if you want to. Okay, then I will share my screen and hope this works. And, uh, and, um, you know, feel free to hang around. Uh, if you have to leave, we understand. Um, but I, otherwise, I suppose that concludes this session. But I'll be around, you know, and uh, maybe some of the faculty will, will stay around too. So uh, the first thing is the uh, DART tour. I'm, I'm going to pop out. I got a meeting here. Uh, I'll, uh, see everybody. Nice seeing you once again. Okay, so this is a quick um, tour of the facilities.
Okay, um, let me see what I have next here. Nope. Okay, this is uh, from the Spitfire Grill. Back in the 
This is probably something most of you haven't seen. This is our remote dance class, and this is Hamilton. So, the Battle of Yorktown, 1781. Mr. Hamilton, you're a fire. You're a man, 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 you are a man 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 you
So I still see there's some people hanging on. <laughs> um, this is the opening of nine. I'll just speed it through. So, uh, well, I'll, I'll let it play for, but I won't play the whole thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
that's who's left. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, if there's anything else you're, oh, am I muted? <laughs> Okay, thank you for, for coming. I'm still muted, so. Oh no, you're good. Oh, I am? Okay, I'm not lighting up. Okay, so thank you for staying. All the, <laughs> and uh, um, if there's anything else uh, we can do for you, uh, oh, I see there are a couple questions. One new message. Okay. Um, Mandy, do you see any new ones that? No, um, just some thank you messages from students who are excited to get started. Okay, all right, great. Okay, well, thank you for coming and uh, email us you know, at any time. Okay, all right, bye-bye.